Home brewers, or people that brew beer at home, are taught from the drop, from absolute day one, that sanitation is everything. But does that carry over to distilling? That's what we're talking about today. How's it going, chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. Uh, the spoiler, or the too long, didn't read answer for the question I proposed in the intro is no. Except when you kind of have to, or want to. What I mean by that is no, you, you really don't have to sanitize everything. It's not nearly as important as it is uh, for beer brewing. But there are a bunch of situations where you may want to employ these same tactics as the beer brewers, depending on what you're after. I think right from the beginning, it's worth mentioning that I see sanitation as a, as a gradient or a spectrum. It's not a yes, no, on, off binary kind of thing. There's a lot of different parts that go into it. There's a lot of different steps that you can choose to do or not do along the way. And each one of them, you can either half-ass them or full-ass them, <laughs> depending on how asked you are. Specific examples of this and, and kind of things that I'm gonna end up talking about in this video are cleaning itself. So are you properly cleaning with chemicals or are you just kind of giving it a rinse off? Are you cleaning at all? Uh, sanitation as well. Are you are you actually using a chemical like Starsan to sanitize the products? Uh, and then if you are doing that, are you doing everything? Like are you doing your fermentation bucket? Are you doing, you know, like hydrometers and mixing spoons and all of those sort of things as well? Or are you just kind of sanitizing the main stuff and, and leaving it at that? Then of course there's the discussion or the choice whether to boil the wort or the wash. The, the substance that you're about to ferment, do you boil that? Do you deal with that in a different way perhaps? Are you going to ferment under an airlock to make sure that nothing from the outside environment gets into the fermentation? Uh, or are you just gonna ferment open? Or you're gonna do it kind of in between. You're gonna cover it and make sure nothing literally crawls or flies into it. But, you know, there's gonna be gas exchange uh, between inside and outside. And then of course there's time, the great equalizer. Uh, basically how long are you gonna wait after your primary fermentation and how long you're gonna let things go before distillation. We'll, we'll talk about most of these things more during the course of this video. So let's first of all kind of just define the, the reasonable zone I think that generally most people are talking about when it comes to distilling and the absolute bare minimum is kind of the, the look test. Just look at your fermenter or your stirring spoon or whatever it happens to be and does it look clean? So does it literally have gunk on it from the last time you did a mash a week and a half ago? You should probably clean it off. Does it literally have something growing on it? Definitely, definitely clean it off. Uh, but as long as it pretty much looks clean, give a little, maybe just give it a little wash out with uh, water right before you, you start using it. That's, in my opinion, kind of the, the very base, the, the bottom level of what I think is generally usable for distilling. At the other end of that spectrum that we're gonna to discuss today is pretty much the, the standards or the techniques adopted by most home brewers. Number one is that you boil the wash or wort uh, before it's fermented to sanitize the wort itself. Uh, and number two is everything, and I mean everything, that touches that stuff from the moment it is cooling down from boiling through to the moment when it's touching your lips and you're drinking it, everything that touches it between those two times is cleaned and thoroughly sanitized. So at this end of the spectrum we're talking about, uh, touching the wash after it's boiled with your dirty mitts, hell no. Uh, using a hydrometer in the fermenter that hasn't been cleaned and sprayed down with star sand, for example. Nope, you can't do that. Everything is sanitized. So if beer brewers and home brewers generally agree that this is what is necessary to create a good beer, uh, why is this discussion, why, why is there this looseness around sanitation when it comes to distilling? Uh, and honestly, the, the answer to that is that we as distillers don't have our product sitting around after fermentation waiting to be consumed. Pretty much any microorganism that can infect beer uh, can be sorted out through distillation. So we finish fermentation, we boil the crap out of it, and we're distilling it at the same time. And that's gonna kill off pretty much anything that can get in there or just straight up not let it go through the still. So it's definitely true that during fermentation itself, a couple of you know wild yeast, bacteria, or fungi cells aren't gonna be able to 
outcompete the yeast while it's fermenting. But the thing is that the yeast eventually stops fermenting, it does its primary fermentation, it finishes, it flocculates out and it just sits there and does practically nothing. And the chances are that there are some wild yeast fungi bacteria cells in that wash if your sanitation hasn't been great, uh, that can eat something that the yeast couldn't. So now they can start to wake up and they can start growing, dividing, multiplying and start to take over and uh, cause havoc. If you're making beer, it can lead to all sorts of off flavors uh, and things like bottle bombs as well. Keep fermenting in the bottle, bang. So as distillers, we don't really need to worry about this so much. During primary fermentation, the yeast we pitch completely outcompetes anything else that can be in there. Uh, and as soon as primary fermentation is finished, we can whack it in the still and stop the whole process. We don't have to worry about bottle bombs. Doesn't happen. In addition to that, a lot of the off flavors that microorganisms can create in beer are actually beneficial in spirit. So for example, in beer, some of the microorganisms will actually cause the beer to sour. Those microorganisms are creating acid, and that's an undesirable taste in beer unless you're specifically making a sour beer. When those acids go through the still, they can go through a process called esterification. Uh, they come out the other side as esters, not as acid. It doesn't taste sour anymore. Uh, in fact, they can taste kind of fruity. Depending on the initial microorganism that creates a specific acid, Different microorganisms can create different acids, obviously. Uh, depending on that specific acid will depend on the specific ester that you get on the other side or the different sort of fruity flavor that it's gonna pop out. Obviously, uh, if you're making something like whiskey, for example, those flavors can be a really good thing. Speaking of a uh, good thing, <laughs> don't worry, I'm not gonna strip anymore. I'm uh, talking about today's sponsor, Into the AM. They make these shirts and these shirts are definitely a good thing. I've been wearing Into the AM shirts for ages, since way before they ever contacted me about sponsoring the show. I got my first one from my wife for a Christmas present. I think that was like, what, two and a half years ago, I think? <laughs> Crazy, man, time flies. They're awesome shirts. The designs are obviously very, very cool. You can see that, uh, but they also fit really well and they're super soft. They just, they feel nice to wear, which is why I wear the things all the time. So use the code in the description box down below to get 10% off everything in their store. Uh, you want a shirt, 10% off. You want to get into their shirt club, 10% off. You want to buy a shirt pack and save some extra cash, 10% off. So let's have a talk about some of those reasons that you may want to dial up the level of sanitation you're going to employ in any specific batch of product you're making. And Honestly, all of these reasons are gonna have something to do with control. And what I mean by that is the more you throw caution to the wind with the least amount of sanitation, the less you're going to be able to know ahead of time what's gonna happen. <laughs> In other words, things might turn out differently than you planned or they might turn out differently than last time. And that differently could be the best thing you've ever made. It could also be horrible. It might also just be unexpected and not what you were trying to make. So the first reason, and honestly I think this probably applies to the most home distillers out there, is that you just really like reliability. You like to make something and have a really good idea how it's going to turn out. Uh, this gives you the ability to make the same product over and over again and have it be fairly similar to the last one. And it allows you to kind of cut down the variables that you don't control so you can work specifically, specifically on what you can control to sort of improve a product each time you make it. So every time you make it, it's gonna be a little bit better. The more control you have, the more likely you are to be able to do that. And this bleeds over into the second thing that I wanna talk about in this situation is where you specifically want to test something. So if you want to test one variable to see if it really has an effect on your product, uh, it's probably not a horrible idea to try and control every other variable as tightly as you can. Uh, and wild yeast, wild bacteria, wild fungi, uh, you just don't know what's going on. You've got no idea. It might be a completely different strain of something that infects your batch compared to last time. So if you want to really, really dial in uh, testing a specific ingredient or a specific process, Perhaps dialing up the sanitation level and going much more like what the beer brewers do is not a bad idea. The third reason is perhaps you're gonna to have to leave your wash 
for whatever reason for an extra week or 12 before you're actually going to be able to get to distill it. Maybe you're going away on holiday, maybe you know you're just going to be super busy, maybe you just want to be lazy, <laughs> I don't know. For whatever reason, if you know you're going to have to leave your wash sitting after fermentation for an extended amount of time, uh, a greater respect for sanitation may be helpful. And once again, it doesn't mean that it's going to be better. Leaving that wash with zero sanitation, just completely throwing it to the wild critters in your area, could make the best thing you've ever made. But statistically, it's going to be much less predictable. And the longer you leave it for, the bigger the effect it's going to have. And lastly, and to be honest, this point's kind of a, I don't know, kind of like a culmination of all of the last ones. But lastly, perhaps you just want to really sculpt a certain experience or a certain flavor by being able to control the microorganisms that affect the product as much as you humanly can. So, for example, perhaps you want to pitch a, a certain brewer's yeast for pi primary fermentation, and then when that's done, you're going to pitch a known volume of a known strain of lactobacillus, for example. Let it work for a certain amount of time and then distill. Uh, you could do that, of course, and that would increase your control of the situation and it would also allow you to sculpt the exact flavor profile you're looking for. So I just wanted to remind the new distillers, people new to the hobby, that pretty much any grain or to be honest most ingredients you use, fruit or whatever, is going to be absolutely teeming with microorganisms. So the question of whether or not to boil the wash before fermentation it is completely up to you, but a few things to note on this. Uh, number one is that if you're chasing sort of subtle, nuanced flavors, uh, a, a lot of those are gonna be boiled off. They're just gonna be obliterated during boiling. Uh, and also, uh, a lot of commercial distilleries that I know that I've literally talked to in person will purposefully allow those microorganisms that came in on the ingredients to sour the wash after primary is finished. But they will generally um, monitor that pretty closely and distill at a very specific time or pH range. A lot of those distilleries, even though they do that, will ferment under you know, an earlock and go through every other sort of full-on sanitation step as well. So I guess what I'm saying <laughs> is that a lot of this is up for discussion and you can kind of mix and match what makes sense for you. So I'm gonna wrap up in a second and tell you what I normally do, like what I do in terms of sanitation when I'm making whiskey. But before I do that, I need to say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. A thank you so very much, guys. Uh, I really, really do appreciate it. So thank you so much. If you are finding value in these videos as well, uh, you can go to chasethecraft.com slash support to find out all the different ways that you can uh, get involved and help out if you want to. Some of those cost you absolutely nothing, uh, and some of them mean that you can contribute directly to the channel, like signing up for Patreon, or buying some merch off the merch store, for example. So let's talk what I do, what I make, and let's specifically talk about whiskey because that's what I enjoy making the most, uh, and I think sort of applies to a wider spectrum of these things that we're talking about. But in terms of uh, boiling, I almost never boil after mashing. Uh, I just don't, I prefer not to. I like being able to let the mash sour slightly to contribute to that esterification process we talked about earlier. Uh, but I am also in a position where I have the luxury to pretty much choose the hour and the day that I'm going to stop that process and whack it into the still. So I can totally understand uh, if that's not right for you, that's fine. Uh, do I sanitize everything? No, uh, I will clean everything before a run or you know, between the last time it was used and when I use it again. Uh, but if I have some reason to specifically sanitize, I will. So if the last fermentation in that vessel kind of went sideways and I just, something didn't seem right about it, I'll blitz it with star sand and kill anything and everything that could possibly be on there so it doesn't affect the next one. Uh, if, for example, I'm lazy and don't clean it properly, you know, for and it sits there for three or four months and, you know, there's sludge in the bottom that starts to go a funny color or something, then I will definitely clean the bejesus out of it and sanitize the bejesus out of it. Uh, but I won't sanitize just for the sake of sanitizing. 
I also don't generally use an airlock. I will cover it up and protect it from anything that can kind of crawl in there or fly in there. But once again, because I'm going to get it in the still pretty quickly and I've got the luxury of being able to do that when I want to do it, I just, I, I honestly, I just don't really worry about it that much. <laughs> So there you have it guys, I hope that helps you out, especially if you're new to the hobby, I hope that that will allow you to kind of pick where you want to be on this spectrum of cleanliness uh, at any given point in time. If you think that um, there's something else to be added to the conversation, by all means, chuck it in the comment section down below, I would love to hear from you and I'm sure the other people hanging around here uh, would appreciate your point of view as well. I'll see you next time guys, keep on chasing the craft, see ya.